evening, folks, and welcome to another helping of Mr. H's Art Pot. You join me this evening back in the studio for a TV license related video. Now, I haven't done one of these videos about the TV license in the studio since about February of this year. However, of late, I've noticed a bit of a renaissance in some of my old TV licensing videos, where a number of people have come on and been asking similar questions regarding becoming legally license free. Well, as ever, Mr. H is always here to help those who genuinely would like to become legally license free, like myself. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to answer six of the most popular questions here tonight for you. And then that way, in the future, should anybody ask the same question again, I can point them straight to this video. So, without further ado, let's crack on with our first question, shall we? Well, in short, folks, the answer to that one is no. There is no requirement or any onus on you as a legally licensed free person to contact TV licensing to tell them you don't need a TV license. There's no provision for it in law and there's no mandate being set out by government on legally licensed free people. Now, there may be situations where you need to contact TV licensing, such as if you need a refund or you've been paying by direct debit, which I'll go on to in a moment. Now, in those cases, you will need to contact TV licensing and... When you do contact them, TV licensing should automatically set you up a declaration which should run for two years, meaning you won't get any letters, but you still may get a visit. And then after two years have expired, it's up to you whether you renew that or you simply don't bother like I've done. Now, if that's the case and you decide you do need to contact TV licensing, then there's two methods of contacting them. You can either contact them via the telephone, which I would recommend, or you can use the website. The reason I say use the telephone is, number one, it's always better to speak to a human being. It keeps somebody in a job. And the website is notoriously flaky. And I think a couple of months ago, there was a little bit of hoo-ha um, way back on the internet forums regarding TV licensing's website not being secure. People were putting the details in and it was sending them over unencrypted, which means hackers could have got all of their... Um, the details. Hopefully TV licensing have got their arse in gear and sorted that out now, but I personally would use the telephone. Now if you're in the lucky position where you've been paying for your TV license 12 months in advance like I used to do, and it's ready to expire, then you can simply just let it expire naturally and then not bother contacting TV licensing. You will get the letters and they will encourage you, encourage you to um, contact them, but there's absolutely no need to do so. Right then, well, I'll move on to the next question. Okay, this is one I get asked quite a lot where people say, why can't I simply just cancel my direct debit to TV licensing? Well, the reason for that is you need to cancel your license first because TV licensing, there may be many things, but they're not mind readers. So if you just cancel your direct debit without telling them that you want to cancel your license, they'll think that you still need the TV licence and they'll start hounding you. And in some extreme cases, which I don't want to fear monger, but in some extreme cases, they have passed it over to a debt collection agency and you don't want them knocking on your door, do you? So the best thing to do is either telephone them or use the website, as I mentioned in the previous question, and then uh, let them know that you want to cancel the licence and then you can safely cancel your direct debit. Right then, on to the next question. OK, this one's pretty easy to answer. The answer to that is, no, you don't have to speak to them whatsoever. Just like you don't need to make a declaration. There's absolutely no legal obligation or any onus on your part as a legally licence-free household to speak to TV licensing if you don't want to. So that means to say, should they turn up on your doorstep unannounced and uninvited, you can simply tell them to jog on. You don't need to deal with them whatsoever. Right, question number four. Okay, search warrants. There's a hell of a lot of myths surround search warrants and TV licensing. In short, the answer is no. They can't just go and get a search warrant simply because you've refused them access. It doesn't work like that. Otherwise, anybody that's ever turned around and said, no, you're not coming in, they'd turn up with a search warrant, wouldn't they? I know there's a number of videos out there that show uh, belligerent goons who have you know, had the nose put out of joint because they're being filmed, saying, well, I'll go back and I'll, I'll be back with a search warrant, you know, and they never return. They never return. It's as simple as that. Someone once worked out that the chances of 
legally licensed free person who is following the no contact rule, the golden rule as always of no contact, is more likely to win the lottery if they do it than they are getting a search warrant executed on their own. Like I said, TV licensing like to use the search warrant as the big gun. That's the nuclear option, you know, and that's the one that they always like to push in the propaganda. But simply, there's not that many search warrants granted. I think in 2015, there was only like 115 warrants granted for the whole of England and Wales and none in Scotland. That's how small that percentage is. And of those 115, we don't know how many of them was actually executed. You know, just because somebody's applied for one, it doesn't mean that they've actually gone and carried it out. So, no, the answer to that is if you turn around and tell them to jog on, you don't have to sit behind your door cowering and wondering are they going to come back with a search warrant. It doesn't work that way. Question number five. Okay, the answer to that, folks, is no. They're not allowed to look at your computer, your iPad, your laptop, or your mobile phone, or any device you know, that's in that category. And the reason for that is, apart from the obvious data protection thing, the law doesn't class them primarily as a television receiver. Now, the fact that you may be able to click on a website if your device was connected to the internet and receive live television broadcasts is incidental. Unless you're actually doing that and you've installed your electronic device primarily as a television receiver, then they are not allowed to look at it. So... On to our final question, which is question number six. And the answer to tonight's final question regarding catch-up services is, yes, you can legally watch catch-up services in the UK without a valid TV licence. The only exception to this rule is the BBC iPlayer. As of the 1st of September 2016, you are no longer allowed to use the BBC iPlayer for either catch-up services or live broadcasts without a valid TV licence. However, all the rest, ITV Hub, all four, five, even ones from abroad, if you can get a VPN and fool the system into believing you're actually in that country, you can legally watch those catch-up services without a TV licence. Right, folks, unfortunately, this brings us to the end of tonight's little video. Hopefully, those of you out there who are considering becoming legally licence-free, either now or in the not-too-distant future, will have found tonight's video a little bit useful and a little bit of help regarding your decision to become legally licence-free. I'm going to get off now and edit this video up. So all that's left for me to say is, until the next time, from the studio and from Mr H, it is... Bye-bye for now.